All right, guys, we're going to uh, just kind of jump right into this tonight uh, with what I feel like God's wanting to say. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with a lot of this. So I'm going to go in a little bit different direction, and we're going to just have a little bit of altar time tonight. Uh, but I, I just want to share a story. Some of you guys probably know this, but whenever I was a sophomore in high school, I'm from Indiana. Everybody say Indiana. Indiana is a great place. That's where we play basketball. Uh, we enjoy basketball there. It's the one of the... Uh, things that they do in Indiana. Uh, you know, here it's football and it's baseball. In Indiana, it's basketball. And so whenever I was a sophomore in high school, I had the opportunity uh, to play on a state championship basketball team. It was probably one of the, the cooler experiences of my life. There, it, it, the funnest part to me was that I got to miss a lot of school uh, because uh, there's a lot of feedback. If you could mute everything but my microphone right now, uh, but uh, we got to travel a lot. We traveled about four hours every weekend there for a while, going to Indianapolis. I had to play in semi-state and state. And so it was just a, it was a lot of fun. It was a great time. Uh, we actually got to play uh, in the RCA Dome. Uh, it was the old football stadium in Indiana. So it was like a football stadium that held like 60,000 people. And then you took a little basketball court like the size of this gym and put it like off to the side. I remember... Uh, I did my first layup in that gym and I airballed it because it was just so massive, it was so big. It was, uh, it was just a crazy experience. But the reason why I share that is because that year was also the first time our, our school had ever won sectionals in basketball. And so you had to win sectionals and you had to re win regionals, semi-state, and then you had to win state. There was like three games in sectionals, two in regionals, two in semi-state, and one to win state. And so it was the first year that we won sectionals. And so, you know, we were all excited. We were pumped up about this. Like, we, we finally did it. We won sectionals. The year before, they were supposed to win. They didn't win. But we finally did it. And then so we went on to win state, which is which crazy that we never even won sectionals before. But now here we are winning state. And so the reason why I share that story with you guys is not to, to boast about me or anything that I was a part of or on. Uh, but the cool thing was, is for the next 15 years at, at my old high school, they won sectionals. 15 years in a row in basketball. We, did, we never won state again. I, I think my junior year, we made it to semi-state and got beat. But, but it was just neat that we had never won sectionals before. But the first time that we did it, now we went 15 years in a row winning something that we've never done before. It was the first time, it was the first time in Tecumseh history that ever happened. Then, you know, a couple of years later, we won state in baseball, and I think they've won state in softball maybe four times since then, and then we've even won state in volleyball twice since then, my old school. And so I just think it's interesting that once something happens, once you do something, once you're a part of something, it's like it changes everything else. It changes everything else. Everybody say first time. And so uh, it, it was the first time. Okay, so this is what I, I want to talk about tonight, uh, just a little bit in, in, a, in a way. But I want to talk about our first times in, in our lives and different things that we might do, uh, mainly spiritual things. All right. First time. I want you to I want you to remember that word, those words in your head first time. Because when it comes to our spiritual lives, there's a lot of first times to be had. You know, the first time that you said the salvation prayer and you gave your life to Jesus Christ. There, hopefully you've had that first time. So where you came to an altar and you, you realized that there's only one way to heaven and it's through Jesus Christ. And you made that decision in your life. Maybe you got baptized afterwards. And if you've never been baptized, I encourage you to do that. It's the first month. Of the first week of next month, we're going to be doing a baptism. And so if you've never done that, that needs to be a, a first in your life. So there, 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 you could be baptized. There could be the first time that you went to camp. Some of you, uh, I was talking to Elijah. Some of you, this year was your first time to go to India. And he went three or four years ago. Like he was a part of the first group that went with us to where what God did this year. If it wasn't for Elijah and their group going to camp, then none of you guys would have got to experience camp the way that you did this year. You understand what I'm, I'm trying to say? There has to be a first time. And sometimes I think that we miss out on that first time, maybe because we're scared or, or we don't try, quite understand it. But what I want you to understand is you will, when you stop experiencing first, you'll stop experiencing God. 
Okay? When you stop experiencing bursts in your life, then that's when you get to a place to where you'll start, stop experiencing God. Because it's in those first times, you know, the first time that you gave your life to Jesus Christ and you came into the altar, you experienced God, you experienced his love. Maybe the first time you came to church, maybe that first retreat. Some of you need to sign up for your first high school small group. But if you don't, if you don't do that first, then you're going to miss out on everything that there's there. You, you understand what I'm saying? But I want you to see that whenever you get involved in this and you start doing first things in your life, you'll see how they'll propel you to do even greater things and more things. See, for us, it was when we won that first sectional, now we win 15 in a row. We win 15 in a row. And so I want you to think about this question. What is something in your life right now that God is asking you to do that you've never done before? Maybe it would be the first time you've ever done it. Maybe it's something that, that freaks you out. You're like, man, there's no way I could possibly do that. There's no way that that could happen. But I, I want you to think about that as I'm, I'm talking about this tonight is what is one thing in your life or maybe two things or three things that God is asking you to do or he's calling you to do and you're just, you're just completely afraid of doing it. Because let me tell you something. This is a true statement. If anybody's taking notes, you need to write this down and, or you need to remember this because this is very important. I want you to understand this. We, we have a real enemy and he's out to kill, steal, and destroy, but I want you to understand that he's scared to death of you. He's scared of you. Every single one of you. And he's not just scared of you when you're sitting back and not doing anything that is supportive to the kingdom of God. He's not scared of that. What he's scared of is he's afraid of your first time. Everybody say first time. He's afraid of your first time. I'll, I'll just share just a, a couple of illustrations of myself, you know, and then we'll get into a scripture passage. But uh, if you would have known me, uh, even when I first gave my heart to Jesus, I was super duper shy. I still would consider myself a pretty shy person, a pretty reserved person, uh, except when I come up here. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty reserved. And so, like Rondo will tell you, uh, I was 19 years old when I gave my heart to Jesus. And uh, I was still, like, I, I still went to the youth group because my best friend was in youth ministry. So I remember sitting in youth group and asked Rhonda about it. Sometimes she loved it. And she was actually teaching youth group. My wife, like, she's older than I am. And so, so she... Two years, by two years. And so she was teaching the youth group. She just came back from the mission field. And she said the whole time, this is what I, I did, is I looked down. I never made eye contact. But the one time I did make eye contact, I looked up at her and I did this. Because it was, she went over. She thought I was a jerk. And so this is, this is just how my personality was. I wasn't super outgoing or anything like that. But I remember the first time that I sat in a service just like this, and it was with the, with the adults. And I remember sitting in my seat, and I was just praying, and I was just seeking God, God, what is it that you want me to do? What do you want from my life? And I remember in that service, I saw a Pastor Tony up there preaching, and I just felt so strong, like, man, I would love to do that one day. But guess what my thought process was? There's no way I could ever do that. There's no way I could ever do that. And so it went on this process in my life of first. Listen, I, I need you to understand that you'll never get to where God wants to take you until you do the first step that he's calling you to. Sometimes I think we want to skip past the little bitty things and want God to propel us to these big, great things, which I believe God has great things for your life. But we have to understand that he wants us to do the little things first. And so, you know, me and Rhonda started talking, we, we started dating, and uh, I, I've shared this before, we were in a young adults class, and my pastor at the time asked us to teach, to teach a class. I was like, yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. Probably not a good idea. Rhonda was like, we'll do it together. And so she's like, so like, I went home, and I'm like, oh, what are we going to teach on? She's like, I don't know, figure it out. And so I ended up teaching the whole class, but she didn't help me at all. She like totally threw me under the bus and just made me do it. But I want you to understand something. Whenever I decided to do that, whenever I got my pad and my pencil out and I started writing this lesson, I, I actually taught on love. 
And I use the scriptures, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 13, where it talks about love is patient, love is kind, it isn't envy, envy, it doesn't boast, it's not proud, it's not rude, it's not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. I use that scripture, and I said, you know, the, the whole message is that the Bible says that God is love, so you can take love out and you can put God in there, that God is patient, God is all these things. And I was like, wait, we're also supposed to be in the image of Christ, so we need to put our names in there. And so it's funny because I believe as I started to write out this message in this class for the first time, I know that the enemy was trembling and he was scared to death because he knew that that was the first thing that I was going to do to get me to where God was calling me to. And so I asked the question again, what is the one thing right now that God is speaking to you that says, listen, you should do this. You need to step out on faith. You need to try this. Because I'm going to tell you, the enemy is saying, don't do it. You, you're shy. You can't do that. He might be saying, listen, you need to go talk to your family members about Jesus. You need to talk to your friends about Jesus. And you're like, no, there's just no way. It's, it's just not going to happen. But I'm going to tell you what, the first time you do something, you're going to find out that there's something so much more than this to this than just us doing what God's called us or asking us to do. I remember the, the I'm, I'm just trying to get through some stories. I remember uh, we, we did this uh, this this trip in Kentucky, and uh, we we uh, we went to the schools and we took clothes. We did all these things there, and we were actually in the gym of our church. And for some reason, I had this thought come into my mind. Okay, and this crazy thought. I, I don't know why I ever thought this. What would you do if they asked you to pray out loud? I was like, hmm. I don't want to, but let me go ahead and practice in my head just in case they do. And then out of nowhere, the, the lady that was headed up, I'd never done anything like this before. She's like, hey, Josh, why don't you pray for us? And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I was just, I just, I rehearsed this in my mind. God prepared me for it. But once again, the enemy was trembling. He's like, oh, my gosh, if he prays out loud, then he's going to take another step into where God wants him. If he does this, then he's going to take another step where God wants him. I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys something. We have some students that have been writing songs, and I'm telling you, every word that they write, the enemy's trembling. Because the, the enemy knows as soon as we take another step and we go forward, listen, we, the, we, we have this op awesome opportunity as a youth band to, to go to New Caney and play in this concert. And it's like way above us. Like I'm just going to go and say, like, I can't believe it's even happening. But the enemy is trembling in his boots because he's like, man, if they go do that, then they're going to go do something even greater after that. And I, I want you to get this. Hopefully I, I'm building your faith a little bit. I remember the first time my pastor came up to me and he's like, hey, uh, do you want to take up offering at church? I was like, what do you mean take up offering at church? No, I want you to get in front of all the adults. And I want you to talk about a scripture about tithe and offering. I want you to do it in front of everybody. I was like, okay, I don't really want to, but this must be what God wants. And once again, the enemy was trembling in his boots. I don't know about you, but that's the person that I want to be. I just said it a while ago that whenever you stop doing the first, you stop experiencing God. When you stop doing the first thing, you stop experiencing God. And so let me read through this scripture passage just here uh, real quick, uh, just so that we can get a little scripture in this. But I want to talk about somebody that did a lot of really cool first things. Who's somebody in the Bible in the New Testament that you know that did a lot of cool first things? Somebody tell me. Well, obviously, Jesus. This isn't Sunday school, man. Peter, right? Peter did so many cool things. He did a lot of first. You know, he wasn't the, the first disciple to, to, to come to Jesus. It was actually uh, James. It was his brother, Andrew. And then Andrew went and got him and, and brought him to Jesus. But I mean, he did so many things that were the first things. He was the first to step out of the boat. He was the first to declare Jesus as the Messiah. He was the first to follow Jesus after Jesus got arrested. He was the first person to ever cut off an ear. I don't know if that's true or not. He was the first to just speak without thinking. This is just who Peter was. Like he would just say things without thinking about it sometimes. But it's neat because when you watch the process of his life, you see that he started off somewhere to get where God was taking him. He was the disciple known as uh, that sticks his foot in his mouth all the time. But yet he's also the disciple that preached and 3000 people came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But it was a process. 
I want to talk about this when uh, Jesus or Peter walking on water. Matthew 14, 22 through 23. It says, immediately he had the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up on a mountain to pray by himself. And I think this is so cool. Like when you read through scriptures, if I just stop here for a second, that Jesus went and Jesus prayed. So Jesus prayed to the Father in heaven so that should mean that we should also be praying. This was also right before Jesus, or right after Jesus fed 5,000 people, okay? So I just want you to keep these things in mind that Jesus just uh, fed 5,000 people. The disciples were with Jesus 14 chapters before this. They've seen him do a lot of really neat things. And so Peter did a lot of first leading up to this one. And it says this, when evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against him. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out onto the water. He says, command me to come out on the water. And this is what Jesus replies, and I want you to understand this. See, uh, Jesus or Peter saw Jesus doing something pretty incredible, and I think we need to get something out of that passage that we sometimes we don't understand what we should be doing or what there is to be doing. And sometimes I just think we just need to figure out what Jesus is doing and try to do the same thing. It needs to be like a, a follow the leader kind of ministry. And sometimes you say, well, how do I know what Jesus is doing? Well, you need to start reading the Bible. (laughs) Read the Bible. Find out what Jesus did. Find out what he was doing. And when you see what he's doing, then step out and do the same things that he was doing. Or at least ask him. And so so Peter's like, Lord, can I come out on the water with you? And this is what Jesus said. It's pretty simple. He said, come. That's it. Come. Just Come. And you thought that it would be too hard. Listen, I thought it would be very hard to get up in front of people and speak. I thought it would be very hard to pray in front of people. I thought it would be very hard to do a lot of things in my life. But Jesus says when you have a vision to do it, that you just need to come. You just need to come. Did it work out perfect for Peter? Yes or no? Yes or no? Somebody say no, please. Really loud. No! Okay, it didn't work out too good for Peter, but did he still walk on water? Yes. He did. He did something that nobody's ever done before except Jesus. You know, it, it wasn't that he, he, he walked and yeah, he might have sank, but guess what? Jesus picked him back up. But guess, just think about how much that increased his faith to do something even greater than that at some point. Maybe when Jesus dies and he walks by a temple gate and there's a crippled person laying there that's asking for money and he says, silver and gold I have not, but get up and walk. Right? See, his first time walking on water gave uh, gave him enough courage to tell somebody that was crippled to get up and walk. And so we need to understand this in our lives that, that we need to start small. We need to start seeking God and asking him, what is the one thing that you want me to do now? And don't think, don't think huge. Don't think this huge, big thing. Start small. Think about maybe your family members. Think about some friends that don't know Jesus and go and tell them. And then watch what God will do for your life. When you do it the first time, and what I I want to end talking about this, is when you do these things for the first time, it releases something something inside of you that you've never felt before. I promise you. Rhonda will tell you, you've never felt it before. Some of you maybe have. You remember, uh, Caitlin came up here and she gave a message for the first time. You talked to her, asked her how it felt when she did it. There's something totally different. It's, It's a totally different thing. But let me ask you this. What keeps us from doing it? What keeps us from uh, stepping out and doing something for the first time? Yeah, the enemy. He he doesn't want us to. We talked about that. Maybe being judged by somebody. Yes. Doubt. Doubt, That's good. What else? Why, Why do we not step out and do something that we've never done before for God? Fear. That's a good one. What? These are good. These are, these are ones I didn't have. So you're, you're out of the game, bud. Two things right here. Complacency. Complacency, living life and just being okay with the way that things are and not seeing the big picture. You know, we were singing this song, Spirit Break Out, 
heaven come down? And the thought that I had in my mind is, do we really want heaven to come? Do we really want heaven to come so that heaven can transform people's lives? And so it's easy for us to kind of get complacent, even though God said, hey, listen, I want you to be in student leadership. And you're like, man, I've never done that before. He's like, listen, I need you to do this. And he's like, you're like, but I'm okay with my life. I'm good with the way that things are. Or God says uh, to go pray for somebody. You're like, yeah, I'm good the way that I, I've never done that before. So I'm sure Josh or Rhonda or somebody else that is more qualified will go do that. And so we get complacent. We get complacent with our lives, with who we are and the way things are going. The second thing is this is comfort. Everybody say comfort. We get very comfortable just doing, like I said, just doing the same thing over and over. We get comfortable. And to do something that requires God to do it through our lives is very uncomfortable. It's not comfortable. And so we have to, to get to our place in our lives, just like the song that we were singing, that the walls in our lives have to come down. They have to come down. Listen, when we went on the mission trip, we had a lot of people that came with us. And I remember that first night and we, we were just having discussions. And it was interesting to hear how people were like, you know, I'm just not real sure how I feel about this. You know, I'm kind of uncomfortable. I, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm not sure what God's going to do. I'm not sure. Uh, what this is all going to look like. But at the end of the week, they all said, I want to be back here tomorrow. I want to keep being used by God. I want to keep doing this because their first time uh, was hard. But once they did their first time, now the enemy is scared to death of you. So let me show you what happens and I'm going to close. I want you guys to understand what you all have inside of you. The Bible says that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells inside of you. In each, in each and every one of you, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the greatest miracle that has ever happened lives in you. The Bible also says that we will do greater things than he did. Did you know that? It says, you, you look at what Jesus did and it says, we'll do greater things than that. And so we all have something inside of us. We all have the right stuff. We have the right ingredients to do these incredible things for God. But it's almost like uh, we get so comfortable and, and we, we just want to just do what we want to do. We want to stay uh, closed off to some of these things that God has. It's like uh, it's almost like a, a, a dam that is blocking the water. That wasn't a cuss word. The dam that is blocking the water and, the, and the nothing can get through. It's just holding all of the water back. And that's almost how like how we are sometimes when you think about the first time you do something for God. It's like we know we want to do it, but there's just something that is holding it back. And it's like all this water is just there. It's ready to affect. It's ready to do something. But it just it can't get anywhere. We all have that inside of us. It's called uh, how do I say? it's the anointing. You guys all have an anointing upon your lives to do something great for God. Every single one of you do. But until you step out and do something, maybe for the first time, that anointing will stay locked back and it'll never be able to do anything for the kingdom of God. But as soon as you say, listen, I'm going to do this, it's like a rock gets pulled away and a little bit comes out and you just start squirting out. And then you step and you do something else and then more breaks away and the more of the water begins to come out, it begins to be released. Listen, the first time I ever went out uh, witnessing or telling people about Jesus, we were actually in St. Louis, St. Louis Dream Center. And I was with a guy who was like a professional at it. I mean, this guy blew me out of the water. He was so amazing. We went up to some guys talking to them. The guy, this one guy had dreads in and he had Bud Light, Bud Light beer caps wrapped around his dreads. And he had grilling, he had, he had everything. And he's like, he's telling me about Jesus, and I'm just sitting there, and he's like, he told us, he said, just pray for me as I'm talking to these people. And he's talking to this guy, and he's like, he's like, tell him about Jesus. He's like, man, this sounds awesome, but man, what if I want to kill somebody tomorrow? I'm like, what? But you can just feel the anointing from this man as he was sharing Jesus. I was like, man, I got to do this for my first time. And so we went out. I was scared to death. We, we, uh, we did it in Indiana with people that looked like us and didn't have beer. Uh, you never mind. 
And so it was easy, you know, we went up to, we, it was easy, but it was hard. We went up to him and it was so hard, like, uh, shaking. But when I did it, it was like, man, I just started to feel so good. Like, man, this is what I was meant to do. And I want you guys to be able to experience the same thing. I want you to experience something that you do for God and say, man, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what this is what God's called me to do. You can ask any leader up here, Martin, the first time you preached on this stage, you felt it, right? You felt the anointing. like, man, this is this is it. This is what I'm supposed to do. The first time some of you may be a saint from this stage, you, you're like, man, this is so cool. Like, this is what I'm meant to do. And it's like you don't know it until you step out and do it. You'll never know it unless you step out and do it. You'll never know until you get rid of your comfort and get out of your comfort zone and say, God, I, I want to do this for the first time. Because when you do it for the first time, the reason why the enemy gets so upset and so scared is because guess what? He knows he'll do it again. Because you find out you can, you feel how God can use you, and then you're going to do it again, and then you're going to do it again, and then you guess what? You'll do it again, and you might get five souls saved for the kingdom of God, and then you might get 10, then you might get 20, and then all of a sudden you've built this army of people coming to know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Why? Because you stepped out one time for the first time. Just like we won sectionals the first time, and then we won 15. You get to find out how easy it is. If you just get out of your comfort zone, come on up. And so what I feel like God's wanting to do tonight and what I and I want and, and what I see God doing tonight is he is wanting to begin to break us out of our comfort zones. He wants to break us out of that. And so I want to do a couple of things. I, I, obviously, I want to be able to pray over you guys who are breaking in your lives to where you're not afraid of it, that you're not complacent, that you're not worried just about being comfortable. But you get to a place in your life to where you're like, man, I just want to do whatever Jesus has called me to do because it's going to be so much greater than what I'm doing today. That's where I want you guys to get. And the second thing I want you guys to do is I want you to actually spend a little bit of time tonight, maybe at the altar and just asking God, God, what is it? What's the, what is the thing that you want me to do that I've never done before? What is this thing that you want me to do that I've never done before? Some of you, maybe you've already done it once, but you kind of, you know, you forgot about it. You're like, yeah, I did do that one time and I haven't done it in forever. God's wanting you to do it again tonight. He's wanting you to do it again in your life. He's wanting you to rebuild some of those dreams so that way God can use you like he's never used you before. Everybody want to stand to your feet. I made this statement earlier and I'll, and I'll make it again. And when you stop experiencing first in your life, you truly stop experiencing God. When you stop experiencing first, you start, you stop experiencing God. And the reason is, is because if you just keep doing what you can do, then you don't ever need God. But when you do things that require of him, when it requires God, then guess what? You get to experience him in your life. So I want you guys to all bow your heads and close your eyes. And we're going we're gonna to make this real simple tonight because I feel like the way that we break things in our lives and our, our comfort levels and our comfort zones is to just worship and just believe him and trust him. But I also think that we have to take that step in faith and just declare to God that, listen, I want to be used by you. I want to do that first. I want my comfort level in my life to be broken so that way I can be used by God like I've never been used before. That I want the anointing of God not just inside of me, but I want it flowing out of my life. And so if that's you tonight... And you want to say, that's what I want. I don't want a, a dam holding back the anointing in my life, but I just want it to be loose. I want it to be released. And, and I'll do whatever it takes for that. If that's you tonight, then I just want you to go ahead and just raise both hands and just put them in the air. You're going to have to go ahead and break some of your comfort level right now to do this. If you're like, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to raise my hands in front of people. I don't want to do that. But I want you to lift your hands and I want you to say, I want to be able to do the first. I don't want my, my comfort. I don't want anything to hold me back anymore. Whatever God says to do, I'm going to do it. 
Whatever God says to do, I'm just going to jump right on. I'm gonna, if God says to teach, then I'm going to come up here and teach. We have a you on the night coming up in, a couple, in like a month. He wants to preach. Who's going to preach? Who's, gonna, who's the next student? Who's going to preach? Who's our student leaders? Who's going to lead this ministry? Who's the next youth pastor? Who's the next revivalist? Who's the next person that's going to do great things for God? Who's the next Billy Graham? It all starts here. It all starts now. But you just release it yourself and say, God, I want you to use me however you can use me. So I want to sing through this song. And I want you to keep your hands. I want you to worship. And I also want you to begin to ask God, what is it? What's the first thing? What is the one thing that I need to do? So let's worship. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to pray over you guys. Let's give everything that you have to him. Let's worship. Feeling my bones are about to move. 